Hello, this is Ollie, the developer of DrawingBot V3. In this video, we're going to look at some of the SVG optimization, conversion, and recoloring options we have available to us in DrawingBot. So if you generate SVGs in other softwares, um, a lot of the time, the SVGs generated won't be properly optimized for pen plotting, which means that the pen will be traveling far further than it needs to, and the plot will take a lot longer than is necessary. There'll also be a lot more pen up and pen down moves which is going to uh, produce more wear on the plotter itself. So it's good to optimize the SVG um, to reduce yeah, wear on the plotter, but also the time it takes to plot. Um, with DrawingBot, it's incredibly easy to optimize an SVG. All we need to do is drag the SVG into DrawingBot. It will import and turn it into a drawing. And then all we need to do is go to File, uh, Quick Export SVG. Um, if you don't have SVG enabled as your Quick Export, Simply go to export per drawing and then SVG. Um, and then if we hit save, you'll see we get a new pop-up which will show um, the SVG optimization process. So you'll see that the original SVG, um, our plotter was going to have to travel 403 meters, um, but now it only has to travel 206 meters. And this is because DrawingBot has optimized the order of the shapes to minimize that travel time. Um, you can see also the pen is only going to be lifted uh, 268 times, whereas before it was over 500. If we zoom in, we can see that DrawingBot has um, added moves. So each green line is a move. And you can see a lot of our moves are just um, between lines that are much closer together. So this is um, really um, minimizing the amount of uh, time that the pen will be in the air and not drawing and it's going to really uh, speed up the plot. Um, so all we would need to do is send that new SVG we've imported. We can quickly go to open folder or open to see that new SVG. Obviously it will, also, it will just be in the folder that we saved it in. Um, and so we can just send that to our plotter and it will be much easier to plot. It is worth mentioning for more advanced users, you can also uh, change the settings of this optimization process by going to file, preferences, and then path optimization. Um, in here, we can quickly make some changes and improve um, our path optimization results. Um, all of these settings are fairly self-explanatory and have many explanations to show you what each of them do. I'd also like to mention line multipass at the bottom. Um, if we change passes to two, this means every shape in our drawing will be drawn over twice by the pen. Um, so if we were to export this now, we will see that the pen will be traveling twice the distance, so we're up to 400 meters. And this is because the, each line is being drawn over twice. Um, so this is good if your, um, your pen doesn't have a very consistent ink flow, or if um, your, your plotter is moving too fast for your pen to keep up. Um, so that's another good option to be aware of, line multipass. Next, we're gonna look at the SVG recoloring options we have available to us. As you can see, when we imported the SVG, our pathfinding module was switched to SVG converter. And in this pathfinding module, we can find the controls for the SVG conversion process. For now, we're going to ignore some of these options. We're going to get into them later in the video. Um, the only option we're wired with for now is derived drawing set, as this will help with the recoloring process. When derived drawing set is enabled, um, the pens that appear here will be the ones in the original SVG. However, if we disable Derive Drawing Set, um, now we can actually use our own pens to draw this SVG. So let's, for example, select um, um, this set here. Then all we need to do is hit Start one more time. Um, and now that the SVG is being drawn with our own pens, we can go from Distribution Type Pre-Configured to Even Weighted. And now you can see the SVG is being drawn with our own pens. So the process for doing that was simply, again, disabling Derived Drawing Set, adding our own pens, running it one more time, and then changing our distribution type to even weighted. Um, we can also, for this SVG, I think uh, random weighted might be a better choice. So you can see the colors alternating for the lines, and this is creating quite a cool effect with this SVG. Um, we can still edit the colors used, so we can quickly change and create new styles. Um, we could even use many more pens, a full set of pens, for example. Um, let's go back to uh, just, um, let's go to this set here. Um, 
Obviously, all of the normal weighting tools are still available to us, so we could increase the weight of the blue pen, for example, and we're getting far more blue lines. Um, so you can see how we can very quickly uh, change the color in our SVG. Um, obviously, this is best used for SVGs that started as a single color, and now we want to add our own special colors to them. And again, we can go to File, Export, and that new SVG will have uh, the five layers of the five pens we've used. As you can see, the SVG optimization process didn't reduce the travel time as much as before. This is just because we have multiple pens and often the nearest line won't be being drawn with the same pen. Next, we're gonna look at some of the resizing options we have available to us. Of course, these are just the standard drawing bot positioning tools, but all of these can be used for SVG as well. So if we disable use original sizing, we're then gonna be positioning our SVG on A4 paper. If we switch back to image, we can actually see what we're doing to the SVG. So let's maybe go from, let's set scale to fit. So now we're positioning the SVG on an A4 paper. Um, you'll see that in this view, the SVG is much lower quality. This is just because we're just using a low quality version of the SVG just to show the cropping changes we're making. We can change obviously the padding um, and we can hit start and then we get our drawn SVG, but this time it is positioned onto the A4 paper. We could also change to A1 paper and run it again. You can see now our lines are much smaller. This is because we specified a 0 0.3 uh, millimeter pen here, but if we were drawing this on A1, maybe we could use a one millimeter pen instead, and we can see we're getting a better result so you can very quickly see what the SVG is going to look like on different size paper um, and set the pen size and play around with what, what size would work best. So that's a quick look at some of the repositioning tools. We can also crop our SVG. So if we go to um, image processing here and then go to edit, um, we can see that we can actually crop our SVG. So we could bring in the sides here and maybe select a window in the middle. We can also specify the exact positions of this here by typing in AT40, for example. Um, and then if we hit start, we're getting a cropped version of our SVG, again, being drawn on A1 paper. Um, and we could still go back to use original sizing here. And if we run it again, um, the actual SVG size will match our cropped size. So there's a lot of, that we can do here. Um, I'm gonna go back to use original sizing and I'm going to reset um, our cropping here and then hit start again. So now we're back to where we were. Next, we're gonna have a quick look at some of the other more advanced options available to us. Um, I've imported a new SVG here. This is really quite a complex SVG with a lot of overlapping shapes. You can see that there's a gradient in some of these colors. Um, and this is something that you would never look at and think, oh, I could plot this SVG. Um, but uh, DrawingBot can actually create a plottable result from even something like this. Um, so I've reset the SVG converter Pathfinder module to the default settings, and I'm going to hit start. And we'll just let this finish. But as you can see already, DrumBot is creating something that we could actually plot. Um, it is creating hatch fills for all of the shapes in the car and drawing around the outlines. So even though we've given it a really complex SVG to work with, this has produced something that we could actually plot, which is really cool. Um, we can change some of the fills. So we could, for example, increase the spacing between the fill lines. So if we run that again, we'll see that we're creating far fewer lines in our filled areas. We could also um, reduce the rotation so we could uh, make our max rotation zero and if I let the current one finish you can see that's with uh, cross hatching but with a random rotation. Now we're going to have no rotation. So this is an example uh, without any rotation so I've set the min and max rotation to zero and now I'm going to show you an example without cross hatching enabled. If I disable cross hatching and run it again. Now you can see with this one, um, again, we've generated much fewer lines and increased the spacing. 
We can also see if we zoom in that the ends of our lines are being connected. Um, this is to re help reduce the plotting time. In this example, um, we may want to actually disable this. Um, to do that, we just need to disable link ends and I'll run it one more time. With link ends enabled, you can see that the ends of the lines are now not being connected. Um, this will have a longer plotting time, but it can actually look slightly nicer when the lines are quite far apart. Um, next, um, I'm going to actually reduce my spacing down to three. I'm going to reintroduce some rotation and then I'm going to hit start. So I think this is quite a nice style with the slightly closer lines and all of them just going the one way without any cross hatching. Um, but um, if we actually want to plot this SVG, we'll go down and then quickly see that we have generated hundreds of pens again. Um, so the instinct would be to want to turn off derive drawing set, uh, run it one more time with our own pens, um, and then see what results we get. So let's first try that. So now we're using um, our own pens with random weighted. We'll just let this finish. So now we're drawing our car with um, just the pens that we have uh, selected. However, this isn't a very good representation of the original SVG in this case, um, because the car has very specific colors. Um, this star, while it's cool, isn't really what we're after. However, there is one op option to help us with this. If we go down to color separation and then select color match, we're going to need to run the process one more time. But before we do that, we're just going to add uh, some more colors to our pen set. So we can actually now add pens that we actually own. Um, we could add uh, yellow. Um, let's add some yellow pens. Um, and so now we've got some yellow and some gray pens. Um, we've got about 12 pens here, roughly. Um, and we've got a variety of shades of gray and a variety of shades of yellow to represent the original SVG. So now, just to show you one more time, I have derived drawing set set to false, which means I'm using my own pens. And then in my pen settings, I'm using color match, not, def not the default color separation. And then if I hit start, it's going to analyze all of the colors in the SVG and compare them to my pens. And now it is actually drawing the SVG with the pens I have given it and choosing the best colors for each part of the SVG. So this has produced a pretty good result, um, and this is something that we could now send to our plotter without having to draw hundreds of colors. Um, so we'd only have to change pens 12 times to produce a result something like this. Of course, again, this SVG was a bit of an extreme example. If you have an SVG that has a few simple colors um, and you'd like to um, rematch them to pens that you already have, um, you can very easily do that in DrawingBot. Um, so again, to get this SVG out and send it to our plotter, all we need to do is go to File, Quick Export. Um, obviously, I would like to point out that DrawingBot um, has many other ways to export our file. So we could use regular SVG, we could in in export as Inkscape SVG, and what this will do is it will just remember the names of the pens. So if we bring up our layers in Inkscape, if you're an Inkscape user, um, you will see the names of the pens you used which is just helpful for um, keeping track of uh, what layers, what and what pen to use. Um, we could then export our SVG as a regular image. Um, we could export the reference image. So this will be um, a rendering of the original SVG. Um, we could export it as a PDF, as G code for CNC machines and other styles of plotters. We could export it as HPGL, which is for vintage plotters made by HP. Um, and, and other manufacturers also used HPGL back in the day. Um, and then you could even export it as an animation, which would show the process of the SVG being drawn. And so you have loads of options for conversion um, here. Um, first, last time, I'll just export as another SVG, and then we can see um, all of the moves and lines that the SVG is going to have to do. Um, at the moment, because we have link ends disabled, you can see that there are quite a lot of pen lifts in this. So I'm going to re-enable link ends. I'm going to run it one more time. Now we have got an SVG where the ends of our fills are linked. 
I will export it one more time. And you can see we have much less pen lifts now. Um, so this will take uh, much less time to plot. Um, and it will also, you can see um, how much each pen is going to have to draw. Um, so of course the blacks and greys are being used the most as well as uh, some of our yellows here. So that's some of the options you have available to you in DrawingBot. I didn't cover everything. Um, let me know if you have any more questions about SVGs in DrawingBot. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching.